Okay, that's enough of that. I'm not very good. <laughs> yes, my ukulele got a couple of those in the house. They passed the time away in the winter. Well, hello there. It's Derek back again from South Wales here in the United Kingdom. It's the middle of winter. It's January. It's the uh, it's the season of illnesses. I'm afraid of exacerbations. Fortunately for me, I haven't had an exacerbation this winter. It may be because I'm on long-term antibiotics, I don't know, but I'll probably talk about that again in a little bit. And I have spoken about medication, and now I'm going to talk about exacerbation, and what is an exacerbation. Now, the first thing I ask you is to listen to your body. You know your body more than anybody else in the world. You know what it's doing, you know how you feel, you know what is normal for you, you know your normal heart rates, your respiratory weight rates and everything if you're like me and you take an interest because you've got COPD and you want to try to remain uh, well. You should also know your body weight as well because being slightly overweight is better than being underweight. Um, that way you've got a little bit in store if you do get ill. When we get ill we lose a little bit of weight. So if we find for a while that we find it harder to breathe we're using more calories and what we're putting in quite often you're losing weight and that is not actually a really good thing if you're going to be underweight I know someone lost a, a stone and a half in a very short time and uh, without hardly realizing it I'm a stone overweight or 14 pounds overweight I'm not sure what that is in kilos um, I would I would give that a thought as to if you can if you're underweight then try to eat something that's going to get the weight up now, I always go with uh, with winter and exacerbations, and this is the time of the colds and the flus and the everything else. Uh, to me, a lot of it is prevention. Prevention is make sure you get the flu jab. Now, it's not always 100% effective. It wasn't last year. It was only about 30% effective. I got ill, and it's pretty well documented that uh, I nearly died of Aussie flu. I'm sorry, Australians there. I know it's not your fault, that's just where the flu originated from. Um, and uh, a friend of mine sadly did die of uh, Aussie flu along with a lot of other people. So you must have the flu jab because even though some years it's not effective, some years it's very effective. This year it is being very effective. But more than that, what I would do is I would think about the pneumonia injection. Now, a lot of people I notice are not getting in a pneumonia injection and some are dying because of it. It's as simple as that. Uh, you must have the pneumonia injection. Now there is uh, a fallacy. Some people think when you've had the pneumonia injection you will not get pneumonia. That is not true. It protects you against the very serious types of pneumonia. Uh, the ones that really do put you in the hospital and put you into intensive care. It won't stop the hospital acquired immune at pneumonias or some of the smaller pneumonias. It doesn't feel like uh, small in any way. I've had it a couple of times, I've had a couple of pneumonias. It's quite frightening, but it's nowhere near as frightening as the more serious ones. It's a once only injection. Get yourself along to your specialist or your doctor. Ask if you can have the pneumonia injection if you haven't already. It could one day save your life. Now, uh, apart from that, what we're looking at is uh, exacerbation. What is an exacerbation? Well, an exacerbation is anything that worsens your chest, that makes you actually feel feel worse. Could be through the cold, the common cold. Could be through the flu. Could be through any kind of virus that you've picked up that is affecting your chest, that's giving you a cough, making you wheeze more or whatever. As soon as you notice that uh, you're worse and you're producing more sputum, you're more breathless, uh, that you're feeling much worse, then you should take your emergency pack. Everybody with severe or very severe CRPD should have an emergency pack of prednisolone and antibiotics and you should start to take them straight away. As soon as you start to take them, you notify the doctor that uh, you have started taking them. So the doctor knows, 
so you can go to him if you need a second lot because it hasn't cleared or also so that he can replace the pack you're using at the time do not hesitate though it's it's very hard i had made the mistake sometimes i thought well give it another day it might not be the thing i might get over it and uh, i've come unstuck you know i've ended up very ill and uh, i think i can only think about once i got away with it it's not worth it don't take the chance it could be the one that finishes you off if you're not careful and at the very least put you in a hospital because that's what happened to me i did that once and ended up with pneumonia and I was in hospital for a few days isn't worth it I look for other signs if my heart rate is higher than normal because I know my body I know my heart rate if my temperature is higher than normal I've got a thing I put in my ear it gives me an instant uh, temperature reading if that is uh, higher than normal I know there may be a problem coming um, and uh, if my oxygen levels are in themselves lower than normal then I know also there might be a problem if they get the three together then I know that almost certainly is a problem and that is if I'm not producing sputum because sputum is also a good sign if you cough up sputum it's normally clear uh, either clear or white if it starts to be thicker than normal coloured or anything like that you have an infection or you're wheezing you know you have an infection start Take any antibiotics or at the least go and see your doctor. If at any time you get worried, you get scared because you're really having problems, don't hesitate. Ask somebody to take you to the hospital or call uh, for an ambulance to come and pick you up and take you to the hospital because really time is of the essence of, uh, of dealing with it. Now, me, I take long-term antibiotics. A lot of people are having them now. They are quite useful. Um, there is a special one that we take that uh, does not affect the other ones. And the idea of this, this is supposed to get you through the winter. It's working for me so far. I'll let you know about that afterwards. Anyway, when you've had an exacerbation, the important part is Recovery. Now each exacerbation can and do make our lungs worse. It's harder to breathe when we go over it. And if we do nothing, we're not going to recover it. We have to work hard, we have to do baby steps. Uh, we're still going to get breathless, I get breathless, I'll see to you now. It doesn't seem too bad, do I? Walking around is a different matter. Um, you must keep moving. You must move, move, move much as you can baby steps even if you're only doing 10 yards stop in or five yards stop in you'll find in a short time you'll do a little bit further and uh, you might always be breathless but you always do things um, you must keep yourself active that's another reason why in the summer we don't get so many exacerbations because in the summer we are more active we're not mixing closely with people so much but we're more active and because we're more active then our immune system is stronger and the sunshine that uh, makes us feel better as well anyway i've rambled on enough today next week or next time i think i might be going to talk about oxygen and uh, that should be interesting for you oxygen therapy well i've been on oxygen for a little while and uh, we'll uh, we'll have a little chat about that soon but for now Bye bye and uh, breathe easy. Yeah, bye.